date. My family wants me to join them for Christmas after disowning me over eight years ago. Need advice on whether to go or not to go? Original post. After being disowned eight years ago, my family has invited me, my wife, 27 female, and daughter 1 female for Christmas. After getting conflicted advice from my friends, one of my buddies told me to post my dilemma here to see what random internet strangers would say. I, 25 male, am the youngest of four kids between my mom, 52 female, and dad, 54 male. My siblings are, fake names, Michael, 31 male, Sarah, 28 female, and my twin brother, Carl, 25 male. For context, growing up, I was the black sheep of the family, and I knew that from a very young age. You see, my family's full of athletes. My dad was a star basketball player for a D2 school. My mom played volleyball. Michael played soccer. Sarah played softball. And Carl was the star running back for the football team. I was never really interested in any of those physical sports. But rather, I was interested in archery, which my family called a wimpy sport. My parents were always invested in my siblings, and rarely ever attended my events to the point where I basically had to beg for them to come to my tournaments. Between the ages of 14 to 16, I had taken part in about 20 tournaments, while my parents only showed up to one. I was never neglected by them, but they were never emotionally there for me as they were for my siblings, and as a teenager, I resented that. Whenever I tried to bring this up to them, they would always call me an attention seeker. But however, this is not why I was disowned by my family. When I was 15, I began dating Amy, now 25 female, who was in the same grade as me at that time. After about 6 to 7 months of dating, I introduced her to my folks and my siblings, and they really liked her. I know I was young, but I could see myself having a future with her. Almost two years later, one of Amy's ex-friends told me that she had been cheating on me for a couple of months. At a time, I didn't know who the guy was, but after confronting her, she told me that it was my twin brother. She basically told me that while at first she loved me, the love she had for my brother surpasses that. Later that day when I confronted Carl at home, I was so enraged that I sucker punched him and knocked him out. I admit that I should have not gotten violent, but years of resentment towards him and the rest of the family just burst open. In exchange for my family not pressing charges on me as I could have been tried as an adult in court, I was sent to live with my paternal aunt, 48 female, who at this point was estranged from the family, and lived in another city about two hours away. From then on, I have not had any contact with them. At first, it was tough, but later on with support from my aunt and her husband, 48 male, I moved on from wanting a relationship with them. I transferred to a different high school and attended a university in my aunt's city and graduated as an electrical engineer. I later met my wife and got married to her. I, at the time of my wedding, thought about inviting them, but went against it because I did not want any sort of drama to my wedding. From that point, me and my wife bought a house an hour away from my aunt and were blessed with a daughter a year ago. About a week ago, I received a Facebook message from my mother and father wanting to reconnect over Christmas at their house. I told them that I would consider it as I possibly have other plans, but would give them a clear answer soon. Later on, both Michael and Sarah sent me friend requests, which felt weird to me. My wife has told me that if I decided to go, she and my daughter would spend Christmas at my father-in-law's house, as she does not have to deal with unwanted stress as she is two months pregnant, and I agree with her. My question to those reading this is that, should I go and try to reconcile with my family or should I not? I am very conflicted in what to do. On one hand, they perhaps feel bad about what they did to me and want to apologize for what they did. But on the other hand, perhaps if I go there, they will try to make me apologize to Carl, which I do not want to. Any advice would be helpful. Now for the top advice before reading the update. I think you should go another time. Spend Christmas with your wife and child. Visit your family at a less stressful time to see if they have any ulterior motives. It might just be about them wanting to see their grandchildren and not so much about you, which would be hurtful to you. Yeah, I agree. Go another time. I was thinking the same thing. It could be something related to the grandkids. Spend Christmas with your wife and child. Christmas is too big of an event to meet them. Also, update us. I can't get this post out of my head. I can't imagine a parent kicking out their child who was betrayed by their other child. They might want to reconnect due to money, grandchild, I don't know. But it's weird that even his siblings texted Opie. 
I hope it's for good reasons, though. I honestly wouldn't spend Christmas away from my pregnant wife for them. Maybe I'm missing something, but why Christmas? They could have reached out at any time and given you a chance to pick a convenient time as they're the ones trying to amend things. I don't know. It seems weird to me. I personally wouldn't go unless you desperately want them back in your life. Optics They found out Opie has a kid and is successful. And now they're trying to heal the family so they don't look like trash who abandoned their son years ago. It's a trap. Notice they didn't open with any remorse or any sign of an apology. They want something. Money, free work, an organ, access to your babies, or just to look good to their friends. I'm not saying don't go, but keep your expectations low. Be ready for the we need you to do X for us in order to properly reconcile speech and have a quick exit prepared. I don't know. As a parent, I cannot fathom going no contact with one of my children for eight years. After my other child did something so cruel to him, so he hit him. That is just inconceivable to me. I would totally understand if my son hit his brother if he ever did something like that. Maybe wrong, and I know I'm not supposed to say that, but we're all still human. Whether you can move past the fact they abandoned you to your aunts and turned their backs for eight years is your choice. But personally, I don't know if I could. If you can't and don't want to see them again, I doubt anyone would blame you. If they do, they don't know the full story. If they do know the full story, then they're not worth of your time either. And now for the update. I wanted to post earlier, but some things got in the way. Two days after Christmas, my wife began to experience unbearable pain in her abdomen area, and she hardly could stand on her two feet. Me and her sister, a 30 female, rushed her to the hospital where we found out that my wife had suffered a miscarriage, and that the fetus had to be removed right away. Honestly, the worst part of me was explaining to my wife what had happened. Due to complications surrounding the operation, my wife was forced to stay for two more days. Honestly, I have been trying to stay strong for my wife and my daughter, but honestly, I'm struggling right now. On to the updates of the original post. Most of you that commented on the same day posted told me not to spend Christmas with them because of the significance of that holiday. I agree, and decided I would spend the rest of the holidays with my wife. They never made time for me, so why should I make time for them? When I texted them this, I assumed they would try to argue with me, but rather they said they respected my opinion and could not wait to see me after the holidays. I began to do some digging into my family to try to figure out why they have reached out. Michael is a corporate lawyer who works for a major company in my hometown. But looking through his Facebook page, he has two daughters and was married to his wife in 2016. Sarah appears to be married to a doctor. She herself eight years ago was studying to be a nurse, and they have a son together. I have a friend who lives in my hometown and has parents who are friends with my parents. When I asked her about Sarah, she told me that Sarah had divorced her first husband, the one she was dating eight years ago, after he had committed mail fraud. Carl got married to Amy right after high school, and they have two kids together. I cannot exactly figure out what he or his wife does for a living through Facebook, but judging that they bought a big house last year in the midst of a pandemic tells me they're not really struggling. My dad seems to be going through a midlife crisis, and my mother is really into the wellness community. I then began to list the reasons of why they wanted to possibly reach out to me now. 1. Money Unlikely because 8 years ago, my parents' combined salary was higher than my wife and my salary. And given that my siblings are not struggling financially makes me think money's not the reason. 2. Organ donation Could be the case but seems unlikely, but a commenter said that it could be that Carl, given he is my twin, would be my most likely match and I think it's unlikely because he was tagged in a Facebook post skiing just a week before Christmas. 3. Regarding my daughter they could possibly be reaching out to me to have a relation to my daughter, but I honestly am not sure. My daughter is not the first granddaughter for my parents, so I do not know why they want to meet her. They most likely found out my daughter existed because my wife's Facebook account was public. She has since privated her account. I then contacted my aunt, the estranged one who took me in, informing her about the situation, and she explained to me why they were reaching out to me after all this time. To understand the situation, you need to understand why my aunt was estranged. My paternal grandpa, 79 male, and grandma, 76 female, had four children. My dad was the second oldest and my aunt was the third. My aunt after college came out to her parents as bisexual and began dating her girlfriend. 
my grandparents immediately disowned her and refused to have any contact with her. However, about four years ago, my grandpa began to reach out. About a month ago, my grandpa had been asking about me and what I was doing in life, and whether I was married or had kids. My aunt responded by calling my grandpa out for wanting to know about me after he supported Carl for what he did. That is when the whole situation changes. My grandpa told my aunt that it's because I had cheated on Amy with one of her close friends, so I deserve to be estranged. My grandpa's a religious nut, so he looks down on cheating. He had been told by my family that after the friend who I allegedly cheated with confessed to Amy, she went to Carl and Sarah for support and comfort. And when I found out about this, I confronted and brutally attacked Carl and Sarah. While Sarah was the one who tried to break me and Carl apart, I did not lay a finger on her. And I did not do that to Carl. When my aunt was telling me this, my jaw dropped. I could not believe that they hated me so much that they were willing to make up a terrible lie about me and spread it around. My aunt later told Grandpa the full truth and what truly happened. And my aunt told me he was shocked because he always thought Carl was a good kid. My grandpa then asked my aunt for my number, which she declined to give. I figured out why my parents and siblings wanted to get in touch with me. It turns out my grandpa had told my parents and my siblings that if they did not apologize for what they did to me and have me over for the family Christmas dinner, they would be cut off from his will. For context, he is a multi-millionaire. So that is why they reached out to me. Not to apologize about how they all wronged me in the past, but rather because if they did not, they would not get anything from grandpa. What a bunch of greedy people. After hearing about this from my aunt, I decided to block all of them. Why should I respond to them? At this point, all of them are dead to me. I have a wife to support after what she went through, and a family that respects me and my in-laws. However, this does not end here, as three days after New Year's Eve, I received a call from an unknown number in my work phone. I'm used to getting calls from unknown numbers because of my career, but when I picked up, I heard my grandfather's voice. He most likely got my number from my company website. The first thing he did was apologize for not trying to get in contact with me for the past eight years. He told me he was sorry that he could not be there for important events such as my graduation, a wedding, and the birth of my daughter. I was not really close to him before, so him cutting me off did not bother me. Later in the call, he told me he was so disgusted with the rest of my family that he is cutting them off his will and adding me to it. I honestly do not know how to feel about that as the money would be helpful, but at the same time, I do not want him to use this as a way to force a relationship between me and my daughter. We talked for about half an hour. The way the call went made me think that perhaps I could build a good relationship with my grandpa, but then he told me something that got me really pissed. He told me that he was disappointed and that my daughter had not taken the family name. For context, after I got married to my wife, the issue of what last name to use as a couple came up. For some legal reasons, I was unable to change my last name to my wife's last name, but we decided as a couple that all of our future children would have her last name. I at this point unloaded on my grandpa, calling him a senile old man and many other hurtful things, and told him to never contact me ever again. The audacity of this man to say that after what I went through is something. I will not let him use the money I received in the will to control me. Even if I receive the money, I will donate it to a local charity, but he is a man of false promises, so this is unlikely. These past few weeks have been really tough for me and I hope to make it to the other side. My wife has privated her Facebook account and my in-laws have done the same. What they do to try to contact me is beyond me. Hell, they would probably hire a private detective to try to find me. I believe they do not know where I live, but you never know. I have thought to get a restraining order. But given that there are lawyers within the family means getting a restraining order will be hard. I did not really get any time to answer any questions given in my last post before it was deleted for some reason. I will do my best to answer any questions for the next day or two. But after this, I am done using the site for a while. Thank you for all your advice and I wish you all the best in this new year. I'm so, so sorry for your loss, Opie. I can't begin to imagine the pain you and your wife must be experiencing right now. Your family is just absolutely chock full of some of the worst a-holes I've ever heard of, and the effing audacity of them is unmatched. They do not deserve any more of your energy. Screw them all. I really hope they don't pursue you anymore and you can focus on your family at home. Thank you for taking the time to update us, and I will hold your family delight. Thank you. Sorry for your loss. I hope your wife gets well soon.
Your family's having a difficult few weeks. Don't let those people get you. I have to say, besides Grandpa's awful comments about the last name, at least the truth is out to make those people look bad. Grandpa can keep the money. If it comes your way, before you do something, think about it when you are calm. You chose good people to be family. Your wife, daughter, in-laws, and aunt. They're all that matter. The others can go to hell. I'm sorry for what you've been through, and for the loss of your child. Remember, you have support and a family that loves you. You are wanted and loved by them. Even if your parents and siblings aren't those people, you are not alone. Seek professional support and help for yourself and your wife. It's a lot you've gone through. Unfortunately, due to the new variant, it has been delayed. Offloading on your granddad might have convinced him that your aunt was full of crap, and to give your family their inheritance. Especially since they tried to convince him that you're some barely contained psycho, and you offloaded at the first disagreement with him. You were well within your rights to be offended, but you just cut off your nose to spite your face there. The guy must be old. He's going to have old-fashioned values. Did you try explaining that it's something that's done in society nowadays, or did you see red immediately? To be honest, you've had a really rough time of things, and I imagine that must have been the straw that broke the camel's back, right? I just figured you might want a fresh perspective. Much love to you, man. I really hope your missus gets better quickly and your 2022 improves quickly. To be honest, right now I do not care how he sees me. I do not want to have a relationship with him on a basis on money. This may ruin the relationship my aunt and grandpa have, but to begin with, they never really had a relationship. 